Well, hello, Phil. Hi, Bram. Good to see you. Welcome in your own office. Thank you very much. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you too. Well, we have a couple of videos that we want to produce here together to really tackle a few things that are really essential for CCF members, right? And one of the things, the first question that I'd like to ask you as a CEO uh, representing the civil industry, civil contractors industry, is it, it's pretty tough times, especially for uh, civil contractors and uh, in South Australia. So. What are some of the things that CCF members, in your opinion, could do to you know, you know, boost staff morale uh, in these challenging times, to make them more productive, you know, make more money, uh, cut costs, uh, and build profit in these type of in this mm -hmm. type of environment? Well, I do encourage our members to look very carefully at their business model. Because you might have the best plant, equipment and technology in the world, but unless you've got the right people in the right jobs, suitably qualified and experienced, uh, you're not, it's not going to be the full answer. Mm. So that's my, my response often is look at the business model, make sure you've got the right people in the right jobs, uh, and then at least you've got a fighting chance. Mm. It starts always with the right people in the right seat, for sure. So <coughs> business model is one thing. Um, obviously, you guys have, uh, as, as part of the industry, you've undertaken quite a bit of dramatic changes. So, Obviously, I've been following it from the early days and uh, seen lots of things happen mm. and be shaken and moved. And uh, particularly, which type of measures has CCF undertaken to pretty much, you know, do the same thing, become more productive mm. as, a, as a business, mm. really? Mm. Well, we, we follow our own mantra, our own ideas, the things we share with our members about good business practice. We have looked at every facet of our business mm. operations. And that includes making sure we do have the right people in the right jobs, supported by the right systems and processes. But our, our motto is members first, mm -hmm. uh, and that really is very much about excellence in customer service and making sure that we are member driven mm -hmm. and people bring the right attitude and approach to that and their members. I often say, look, when a member comes into the CCF offices, you need to treat them as you would a guest in your own home. Mm. That's how we see it, and we're very genuine about that. Mm. But of course, not everybody understands the requirements of delivering good customer service, and this is where education and training is very, very important. Mm. So I'm a, a big believer in education and training. I think quite sadly, when times get tough, uh, some companies do see training, staff training as discretionary, and it's one of the first things that goes out of the budget. In my view, it ought to be one of the last things because a trained workforce is a productive workforce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would it be fair to say that uh, there's different types of training that can sometimes make it or break it? Oh, I think so. The quality of training and trainer is very, very important. Uh, you've got to have people training your staff that actually walk the talk. Uh, and uh, live by example, run their own businesses in, in accordance with the standards mm -hmm. uh, that they're discussing and suggesting is, is the best way to go. So quality of training, uh, people with credibility and a, true, a proven track record of success is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I know that one of your big babies is leadership stuff, right? The strategy is one thing, but the people management side and the motivation is another. Um, could you give a couple of specific examples that, you know, based out of your own experience, your own organization, that actually, again, for CCF members could be, you know, good case studies where you can actually show, well, this is what we did and this is what it brought? Well, it's all about getting the right people in the right jobs and uh, making clear to your people, the people that work for you, what the expectations of the organization are. Uh, people always bring a, a level of technical competence to the workplace, but what you want is the best attitude, is the right attitude, the right cultural fit. Mm -hmm. People that actually will come to work, want to come to work, want to get out of bed in the morning and come and make a difference. So for me it's about creating an environment, uh, a workplace where people can be innovative and creative uh, and uh, bring something special to the workplace who can look back at the end of the day and say, yeah, I genuinely made a difference. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, people aren't born necessarily with all these attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, they need, need training and a degree of education 
around what some of these skill sets might look like and how you apply them. That makes a lot of sense. Um, obviously, there's everybody in the business is important, as you say. Everybody needs to treat clients as uh, a member of the family that walks in. I'd like to specifically <coughs> zoom in on two particular divisions within every organization. One being the people who lead the ship, the captains of the ship, and two, the people who win the work. Where do you see that each one of those groups could potentially do better? And, um, you know, what's, what's some of the key takeaways from Phil? <laughs> uh, look, I think good leaders make other leaders. I think that's very important for the CCF administration. I try very hard. Uh, I delegate as much as I can. I give people the freedom to bring something of themselves, to bring their full skills to the organisation. Uh, and as I say, the mantra is uh, good leaders make other leaders. I think that's really important. It's really important that a good leader surrounds themselves by competent people uh, and people that are prepared to lead others. Mm. Uh, and of course, there's a bit of self-leadership involved in this too, because it's very important that leaders in an organisation do lead by example, mm. have the right attitudes and they have the right skill set, but of course, all underpinned by the right education and training. Exactly, good point. I, no I noticed that you, some of the words you, you use very often is attitude. It's very much around self-discipline, the self-mastery sort of stuff. Um, obviously, we've been working together for a while now. Uh, we've been uh, working with some of your staff as well. What are those couple of really nice pearls that you see started to see happening as you pretty much led by example and decided to not just scale back but actually invest in your people? Look, I think the important, is, the important part of training is often uh, people gaining a greater awareness of themselves mm. uh, and their own skills and experiences. And I think in a way, if, if you haven't got your act together personally, uh, then I, you're likely to struggle, uh, you know, leading others or if it's about delivering good customer service. If you don't really understand the essence and the elements associated with that, I don't think you're going to be able to, de to deliver an exemplar mm. uh, in customer service. But I, certainly the training that we've exposed our staff to has gone very, very well. Uh, we've seen uh, improved results and productivity mm -hmm. and in a number of cases uh, improvements in people's attitudes uh, and their awareness of themselves and uh, how they relate to the members, how they relate to their colleagues and uh, even our customers. So I've been very, very pleased about that marked attitude change and I think that in many ways um, is um, attributed to the training that mm -hmm. they've been receiving uh, certainly in the last year or so. Fantastic. Well, I'll maybe touch base on something that not very many members may be aware of, but one of the things that I've noticed and which I really, again, where I show that it proves testament to what you said, you know, leading by example. I remember just a conversation a few days ago where you said, look, um, I get up every day and do my jog, my jogging uh, trip first, uh, first thing in the morning because it sets me up on a good... Uh, it puts me in the right space here, it gives me focus, gives me on a high, makes me physically feel better and have more energy. Mm. And um, I'd like to just expand a little bit more on that, you know, because it, it shows again how that self-mastery bit kicks in. It's about developing certain disciplines, isn't it? Mm, it certainly is. Now, I often say that uh, you can't be a good manager unless you're physically and mentally fit. And it does start with uh, self-discipline, the discipline to get out of bed in the morning, to go to the gym or go on that jog or that run or even that power walk. Uh, and it does help you, I think, focus the mind. You're focusing, it allows you, gives you the space and the time uh, to think with more clarity about some maybe personal but certainly work-related issues. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt anybody who does gym work or does any form of physical fitness, uh, for the rest of the day, you feel uh, certainly a lot better. You're more enthusiastic about your work. Mm. You've got a lot more energy. 
You've got that blood pumping around the body <laughs> through your brain, improving your decision making. So I really I encourage uh, my staff, all of the staff, uh, but certainly the management team, uh, to make sure that part of their regime for the year is looking after their own physical fitness. Mm. That's a very good point. I completely adhere to it. And I also appreciate the fact that you said, how can you be a really good manager of a business and represent the business if you look a certain way, mm. right? So I think it's a really good, good thing to be self-reflective in that sense, so good on you. Um, maybe one last question, um, as, I, as we pointed out, um, we've done already some work with the, the sales team here at Adela Group Partners and CCF, we've uh, started yes. working together in a very nice way, pleasant as well, which is, helps as well. And uh, the other one, uh, we're now starting a program this year that potentially could be of uh, benefit to CCF members as well. Specifically when you mentioned uh, key attributes of well, how can you make people be, take on a more positive attitude? Uh, you said, you mentioned the keyword of customer service. Well, does it, how does it mean and how does it operate within the business? You, you touched on various points uh, with regards to leadership mm -hmm. and strategy. All of these key points will be developed or handled uh, over a 10 month period. Would you, let's say, given your experiences with La Group Partners, feel comfortable in recommending and endorsing uh, the program? Yeah, look, Graham, I'd be very, very pleased to endorse La Group Partners as a creditable training uh, provider, uh, certainly with a proven track record of success with the CCF staff. We've been very, very pleased with the results. Uh, you know we've worked in partnership with you. We've established KPIs for a number of our staff mm -hmm. doing certain aspects of our work. Uh, and the training that they have been exposed to has been very, very complementary. Mm. Uh, and it's reinforced uh, some of the things we've been talking about. They've been getting the skill set necessary. They felt more confident about extending themselves and candidly, I think the results we're getting, uh, there's a lot to be said about the training that they have been receiving from LaGru Partners. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you're so happy with it. Um, I definitely also would welcome more CCF uh, people in it because, again, <laughs> there's a lot to be done and this can be a fantastic year. I personally mm. believe that 2014 can be the year in which many businesses reinvent themselves and uh, see the changes happening in the marketplace being a positive to actually become more self-aware mm. and um, build a business, reinvent it again, yeah. seriously. So I look forward to continuing our journey together. I do appreciate your time here. And uh, is there any last thing that you would like to um, say? Or? No, well, Graham, we wish you and your associates all the very best. As I've said, I've come to know you quite well over the last 18 months. I respect you as a training provider, as you know, the CCF, Civil Train, uh, is a significant training provider. We know as an organisation how important standards are, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, uh, and I certainly value a close association with another training provider that is concerned about standards and making sure that their customers and clients uh, do get that very good return on investment. So we do look forward now. Uh, to a, a long association with you and uh, LaGru Partners. And it does help that we're in this, under the same roof. <laughs> oh, I think it's, it's clearly a great benefit to both of us. Well, thank okay. you so much, Phil. Good on you. My pleasure. <laughs>